Hello everyone, this is Just a Dad. Today I'm gonna to do an unboxing and show you how to set it up for the first time, this Keurig K Supreme Smart. Okay, so it looks really nice. We got a removable drip tray. On the side, we got a water reservoir. Pretty nice. We can move that water reservoir around back. I'll show you how to do that. There is a QR code here on the back. This is for connecting your uh, brewer to the internet. It's got kind of a black plastic finish. Here's what the top looks like. It does have the five needle brew technology. Single needle in the bottom. And it looks like we've got that little camera up here that's gonna take a kind of look at a picture of the K-cup when you close it. Here's kind of a close up of that area. So it's got a screen, we got some buttons here. We got six, eight, 10, 12. We can change the temperature and the strength and our favorites. Okay, so here's what the bottom looks like. It does have this little piece I can take out. I can move the water reservoir to around back. It does give us a model number K28, 120 volts, 60 hertz, 1,520 watts. So let's just show you how to change that reservoir. Pretty simple, kind of like their standard other ones. You're gonna move this cord now. We'll have to go through this part here also. Just relatively simple. And you got to put this piece back in over here. That's going to kind of help keep this all together. Make sure you push this in all the way there. Now I've got the water reservoir around back. Here's what I like the water reservoir. It's got a nice handle and it sits on the table fine. Yeah, I love these kind of reservoirs. So there's what it looks like when it's around back. You can hardly tell it's there. Dimensions front to back with the reservoir in the back is 14 and a half. And width, you're looking at about almost four and three quarters. So with the handle up height wise, you're about 17 and a half. So the plug-in, the standard plug-in, it's got three prongs and it's 24 inches long. Okay, so let's move the water reservoir again. We can only move it to, from one side to the back. We can't go to the other side with it. Pull this out. There's some tubing down here. You're just kind of pulling that tubing just a little bit. You don't want to pull it too hard. It could break it. You got to get it off to the side and then slide it in. And then this piece will slide in and snap. Okay, so now the dimensions front to back with it on the sides about 11 inches. And your width increases to seven and a half. Okay, so the first thing they recommend, we're going to take this and we're going to rinse this out with soap and water. And then we're going to fill it up with fresh water. Okay, so your, yours may or may not have come with this water filter. Here's what it looks like. We've got to do some prep work. There's carbon in here and there's carbon dust we got to get out. So get you a little cup, just regular tap water, set it in there. We're going to let it soak for five minutes. It does require the tall handle water filter holder. That's what's going to snap into the bottom of the tank when we put our filter in. Now you don't have to use this filter in order to operate the Keurig. The Keurig will work just fine without a filter. Okay, so after five minutes, your water is going to turn like a gray. Take it over to the sink. Then you're going to rinse this filter underwater for just about 30 seconds. Okay, so next we've got to put it in the tall filter handle. So you're gonna pinch these two tabs on each side and this bottom part will slide off. Now there's a rounded top that goes in first, then slide these in and these are gonna kind of snap. Now this, this next part's kind of important. You're gonna snap it onto that black thing. Now you can do this with water in the tank or with water out, but I'm gonna show it to you. And again, make sure it snaps on there. If you don't snap it on there, it'll float, and then the water will go around it into your Keurig, so it won't be doing any good. Keurig does recommend you change that carbon water filter every two months. Okay, so you'll notice I've, I have not plugged the machine in yet. Make sure you fill this tank up with water and put it on the machine before we plug it in. Now, something I am noticing new is there's this little notch cut out in the top of the tank. I think that might be to let... Um, air into the tank sometimes. Some Keurigs do have a problem with the add water light does not come on all the time. So maybe that is designed to help that out. Okay, so with the water tank full, again, that's a very nice handle. Just set it on there. Now something I like to do for a new machine or a machine you haven't used in a while, take it on and off a couple times. It's kind of like priming the pump. Again, I have not plugged it in yet. If you don't have your water filter in there, you can see the air, air bubbles coming up. But just Set it on and off a couple times. That kind of forces water into that tube and just kind of helps the machine out because it might be dry on the inside of that machine. Okay. 
Okay, so now let's plug it in. Okay, so it powers up right away. It's gonna ask you for English or French. So it's got kind of a menu section here. You can use these arrows to kind of change the highlighted area. And when you've got it to where you want, press the big K button. And it says select OK. Now it's going to want you to connect to the internet. Now you don't have to connect this to the internet to use it, but it is nice. You do have extra functions if you connect it to the internet. And at this point I can hit skip or I can hit connect. You're going to need the Keurig app on your phone or, or your tablet. Okay, so on your smartphone, this is what the app's going to look like. It's going to say Keurig Green Mountain. Okay, so you do have to sign in to the Keurig website. Now you're going to do it through the app. You can create a, a username and password. They don't require your credit card information, but you do have to create a, a username and password. Now something that's important, make sure your tablet or phone has its Wi-Fi on and it's connected to the same Wi-Fi in the house that you're going to connect this thing to. Okay, so the app, once, I'm, once you're logged in, it's kind of a home page. Now down at the here, it says uh, there's called Brew. And up at the top, we've got this Brewers uh, tab also. You can have multiple um, Keurigs connected to this one app. Okay, so but first con uh, click on this account one. So under account, that's gonna have this tab called Connect Smart Brewer. Now here it lists all three. Now Keurig has three different smart brewers. This is the, the K Supreme Smart. They have a K Supreme Plus Smart, a K Cafe Smart. So we're gonna do the K Supreme Smart. Now it's saying find the QR code on the back of your device. Click scan code. You gotta give the app permissions to use your camera. Okay, so now you're gonna point, my tablet has a camera on it. I'm gonna point it air. QR code successfully scanned. Okay, so now if your brewer went to sleep, just kind of press the K button. I'm gonna hit connect, waiting for the app. That's important, you want that waiting for connection. Now in the app, you're gonna come over and hit the alert link. Now it should be searching for the device. So it did find it, hit, the, hit connect. It's gonna create a temporary Wi-Fi network between the two. This still says waiting for connection. Okay, so it says brewer linked. Okay, so now you're gonna tell it what Wi-Fi do you want the brewer to connect to. I want it to connect to Ginkgo Tree. I gotta give it my Wi-Fi password. Okay, so once I click the Wi-Fi password in there, it says this. And the brewer still says waiting for connection, so that's okay. Okay, so it says success, allow location, yeah. Then click okay down here. Okay, now the brewer says Wi-Fi connected. Nix will run you through a cleansing brew. Hit continue. Do not insert a pod. When ready, hit the trip. So make sure there's no cake up in here. It's going to do a rinse brew. And now that we're ready, the K is flashing. You're just going to press the K button. So now it's going to bring water in, heat it up, and run it through there to kind of flush out the system. Make sure you've got water in your tank for this. And that water coming out is going to be really hot. And it says the word cleansing brew up there. Okay, so now the cleansing brew is done. You're going to hit continue. It's got a little menu it's going to walk you through. It recognizes as brew ID, customize your cup, brew over ice, hot water rinse button. That's nice. Okay, so now it's ready. Now the, the app went back to like the home page, so click the Brewer tab up here. And now we can see there's my K-Supreme Smart. It's got a little green icon that says it's online. I can go in now and use the app. I can go in to change different Brewer settings. I can put the high altitude mode on. And let's click on Brewer Details. There's kind of the model number and device number. You can go in here and, and click the name of it. You can call it your, you know, whatever name you'd like to call it. So that's kind of one menu for the brewer, but if you click on this brew button down here, this brings up a whole nother set. This is actually where you can actually do brews from your tablet or smartphone. You can actually tell the coffee maker what to do. So let's just run another hot water and hit brew hot water. It's gonna say, make sure you've got a mug in, hit continue. And so the tablet is telling the brewer to brew hot water. 
It says remote brew in progress and it's doing it. Okay, so since this brewer is connected to the internet now, it's got brew ID. So let's put a K cup in. You, you can put it in any old way. You don't have to make sure it's a certain way. This is gonna take a little picture of it as you close it. You'll see a little light come on. Then it's got a sensor up here that's saying brew ID. And it's gonna tell you what the recommended setting for that is. It recognizes it as a Starbucks salted caramel mocha. So they still want you to select the size. Now I brew my coffees on eight ounces, but if you brew yours on six or 10 or 12, you can still, so you gotta press the eight ounce button and then the brew button. And then let's do that. And then if you've got your app open, the app's kind of following along with what the brewer's doing also. It's called a signature brew now. So the coffee maker is very fast and quiet. Yeah, that coffee smells really good while it's brewing. Then the screen kind of shows, it says it's brewing, and then it'll also tell you what the cup is that it's brewing. Salted caramel mocha flavored. Okay, so it's a really fast coffee maker. It brews a really hot cup of coffee. Mmm, that tastes good. That's a very good cup of coffee. Okay, so make sure you open it up. It says there's a used pod in there, remind you, so let's open it up. Again, there's the five needle multi-brew technology. Now what I found with multi-brew technology is once about once every four or five days, you do have to do a fresh water rinse. You will get some coffee grounds kind of up here, but I don't notice that they go through and get into your coffee unless they build up for a long time. But if you keep up on the fresh water rinses, so just put this down and don't put a cake up in, put a glass down there and just do a fresh water rinse. That's essentially what that button is right there, hot water. You can do it on the lowest setting, hit K, hit the brew button, and that just runs fresh water through there. That keeps those needles nice and clean. And you'll notice when you do these fresh water rinses that there's be some coffee grounds in there. And that's normal, that means it's cleaning them. Again, here's the cake up that we brewed. It pokes a hole in the bottom and five in the top. Okay, so let's do another coffee. Put the cake up in, again, it kind of takes a picture of it, sends it through the internet, tells you what the recommended settings are. You know, if it says classic brew, then it didn't recognize the pod. So if it doesn't recognize the pod, then it just says classic brew, but it should have recognized this one. Yeah, now it did. So when it recognizes the pod, and it's that when that light lights up, that says it's got it's got different temperature and strengths according to what is the best brew. You still have to pick the size you want, but I can still change these. So click on temperature. So see, I can click, I can change the temperature of what I want. And same with the strength. I can go rich, strong, all these different strengths, a different ounce, and then press the brew button. But once I change it from what it recommends, that little light goes out. But if I want to go back to that, just press that and it says signature brew. So it picked the temperature and the strength for me, but I still have to pick the size of coffee I want. And here's another eight ounce coffee. Let's just check the temperature real quick. Yeah, that's a really hot cup of coffee. 194. Then it sends a little gush of air through the K-cup and the lines to kind of clean them out. And you end up with a 177 deg 8 degree cup of coffee. That's a really hot cup of coffee. And so I, everything I can do on the screen, I'm going to do on the brew. So press this brew button again and cl click on classic brew. I can change the ounces. I can also do balance. This is strong. That's the, um, that's the strength. I can slide this down and the hot, the temperature. I can select all of those from here. And then the nice thing about this, hit this little heart button, you can name that. So once you got your settings just right, you can name that Tom's and hit create favorite. And now come up here and hit the word favorites. And now when you come up here, come up here and hit the word favorites, it'll show your favorites that you've got stored in the machine. You can also do it from here, but when you do it from the machine, you just can't give them a, a certain name. It does come with this little card that says your warranty gets extended another 12 months. So basically two years of coverage if you connect it to the internet. 
So Keurig has been working on this Cafe Creations. This is a pretty nice deal. They're giving you menu options for iced coffee. They're showing you how to make an iced coffee with a Keurig machine. Sometimes you need a milk frother, different kinds of K-cups, but at least you can kind of go through there and see what you would need. But that's kind of a really neat deal. And the neat thing here is you can even order, th so through the app, you can set up auto delivery. You can also order K-cups. It'll, it'll kind of show you what you're using the most of. And if you're running low, it'll say, hey, do you want to order some new K-cups? It, it'll do it automatically for you. Or you can just tell it to. So it does come with this nice quick start guide. Kind of walks you through different things about how setting it up for the first time, how to connect it to the Wi-Fi. So it does say every week run a, a rinse pod through there. I, I normally just do a, um, a cleansing brew, like a rinse, clean water rinse through there. I don't necessarily use a rinse pod every week. Every two months, change the water filter. That's that carbon water filter. And every three months, you're supposed to descale it. Or when the descale notification turns on, you'll see the word descale on your screen. Okay, so to get in the menu mode, you're gonna press these two arrows at the same time. That gets you into the menu, then click next. There's your Wi-Fi. There's the descale mode, so you can start a descale when you want to. You can change the descale alert reminder to on or off. So if you want to be reminded when it's time to descale, you can turn that on or you can turn that off. So it will not remind you. That's a pretty nice. High altitude setting, language, English, water filter reminder. So this will remind you every two months to change your water filter, brewer info, support, factory reset. So if you want to do a factory reset, it's going to, it's going to do away with your Wi-Fi, everything, just like you got it out of the box. You'll press the big K button for a factory reset, and you're back to settings. So when you're in this, you, this is how you exit out of the menu. Then you'll click exit. Now the brewer will automatically shut down. If no one's used it for about five minutes, it does shut down. But it says you can press and hold the K button to power it off. So let's try that. Yep, powering off. And then to power it on, they power on whenever you open the lid. It powers on. So this looks like a really nice coffee maker. This was just my unboxing and initial setup. I'm gonna do a full detail review on this. I'm gonna go through all the temperatures, all the different settings. I'm gonna do a separate video on how to descale this. So you really should, you can turn the notification off, but you really should still descale these every three to four months, depending on how hard your water is. And I'm gonna show you, you can descale it with vinegar or the Keurig solution, but we do have to put it into the descale mode. I'm gonna do a video on how to clean the needles. So once in a while, the needles do get clogged. I'll, I'll show you how to clean the needles. I'm gonna do a comparison video. I'm gonna show you this, the K-Supreme Smart against the K-Supreme Plus Smart and then against the, the old K-Supreme coffee maker. So I did pay full price. This was $230. I have seen it. It did go on sale right away. I missed the sale, but I think it was about 20, 25% off. So this is probably gonna be a really popular item. And I'm also gonna do, I'm also gonna open it up and see how, what it looks like on the inside, see if there's that thermostat that we need, we can reset. Sometimes that'll pop during descale. So see if there's a resettable thermostat on the inside. And then I'm also getting ready to do the K Cafe Smart. I'm really excited about the K Cafe with the with the milk frother. So again, I really appreciate everybody's support. And if you could, please like and subscribe.